Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I'd like to start off by asking a question. How many of you all have a pet in this room? Exactly. A lot of people have pets. Me, my roommates, Michael, we're no exception. We have, we have a pet too. We're just like the 46 million other households around the country that have a pet. Our pet's name is... You have to use the computer on a Prezi. Our pet's name is Lily. Lily is just like many other dogs, many other puppies around the nation, and she, there we go, she enjoys running. Lily runs everywhere. So when we first got Lily at my house, we started, we started to talk about what if, what if Lily runs away? Because Lily is everywhere all the time. So we talked about what should we do for this? Um, we found that we started looking up like, we, we, we started thinking bigger than this, like Lily running away is just the first step. So is there a real problem in the United States with this? We found that one in three dogs or cats will be lost in their lifetime. Five to seven million pets are lost each year in inter-animal shelters. And of those that are lost, 17% of dogs, 2% of cats are returned to their owners. Numbers are obviously very low. So it shows that there is a need out there for uh, some type of something to find your pet. So what are your options? Most obvious option is microchips. Everyone knows what the implant is, the microchip that you implant inside of your dog. Um, but there's a few problems with these microchips. First of all, microchips, they're, they're only implanted, only 5% of the United States is using uh, these microchips. And of those pets that have, of that 5% that have the implants, less than half of those pets are equipped with properly registered microchips. Uh, the reason we say that is because on these microchips you have to have a certain type of reader to read each microchip. They're not universal, which is a big problem. So when a vet, it may, uh, a dog may come into an animal shelter, may have a microchip, but the veterinarian may not have the proper equipment to scan this microchip. Huge problem. So what do we do? We started thinking and we came up with our own idea. We came up with Tagapet. Tagapet centers around NFC chips, Near Field Communication Technology. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a newer form of RFID uh, technology. Um, basically what you want to do, so I, I actually brought an NFC chip with me here. This is the NFC chip. Basically what happens is um, you, we're going to set it up to where you have a mobile app that goes along with it. So you get any type of capable mobile device, you place it in close proximity to the, the chip, and you will be forwarded to a profile page for your pet. The profile page was made by the owner, kind of like Facebook. We're living in the age of technology. Everyone likes to do that stuff. They like to tell you everything online. This way, pet is lost. Uh, the owner can put a notification on there that says the pet is lost. So if someone else were to scan the tag, that person can know that the pet is lost. What we also want to do with this idea is we want to tie it in with veterinarians. You see we have medical information. Over here, we want to do this, we, we kind of want to do it like hospitals are doing now. You know, like hospitals are, they're taking patient information and they're putting it all online. That way if you ever switch a doctor, you can access that information at the new doctor. It's, everything's online. We want to start doing this with pets as well. That way, um, if I were to move from Kentucky to California and I don't have to go to the vet to have all that information transferred, it's on this profile. It's on this profile. So why is, why is our product better than uh, the microchip? Well, basically because it's cheaper. To make this, it only costs 25 cents. 25 cents. The average price of microchip is a $50 for the implant and everything. More user friendly. More user friendly. Uh, by 2013, it said that uh, 93 million smartphones will have NSC cap capabilities. That means that everyone who has a smartphone can scan this chip. No more. Um, not having the right reader for the certain type of chip, no more of that. And no pet harm. I was actually just talking to this gentleman, I don't know where he is, over here, earlier. He said he used to work at a vet clinic. He said when they put, he said it's a 17 gauge hole that they put inside the animal to put the chip in. 
one of the biggest things that we want to enforce is that the future possibilities of Tiger Pet. We don't just want to stop with dogs or cats. We see this being able to go many places. We see us being able to go, I mean, we're not the only country with pets. We see a huge horse industry here in Kentucky. We can, maybe we can start, uh, start get into that market. Start, um, they can have all the medical information for the horses and everything right on a chip that's on a collar. We see it going big places. And I'd like to thank you all for listening. Um, good day.